Um, just Tuesday evening, I led in the ladies' meeting, and we talked about Jesus coming to give life more abundantly. And so I was continuing in the thought of abundance, and I wanted to share some more things with you this evening concerning the abundance of the Lord's kingdom. And first of all, there is this environment. It's an environment that the Lord has created in which he has placed an abundant provision. It's one in which the world cannot find it. even have a desire for the things that are provided in this environment. But for those who are in Christ, it satisfies our longing. And it's an abundant provision, one that we can continually partake in and be satisfied. Now, firstly, the reason that there is a place of abundance is because there is a God of abundance. When he spoke to Moses on the mount, God told him that he was the Lord God, and one of the things he said was that he was abundant in goodness and in truth. In reference to his conversion, Paul told Timothy that the grace of the Lord was exceeding abundant, past abundance. Here we have an idea that can't even be expressed in words. Exceeding abundant with faith and love. And also Peter blessed God for his abundant mercy whereby we have been begotten again unto a lively hope. So we see the reason that there's a place of, envi- uh, place of abundance, an environment of plenty for the people of God is because God himself is abundant. And he has made this environment by dwelling in it himself and then calling his people to abide there with him. Now God is abundant and in his son Christ Jesus he's abounded toward us. So here's the environment, Christ himself. He's the environment of abundance. Uh, One of the reasons he extends this abundance toward mankind is firstly to heal. Jeremiah 33 verse 6 says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure. I will cure them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. So we see here that the abundance of God being revealed to man was in order to heal them and to bring reconciliation. Those who were once far off have been brought nigh unto God into this abundant place of provision. Um, The copious supply is transferring us into his kingdom, into the kingdom of his dear son. Of this, in, of this kingdom, it said, the increase, there will be no end. Speaking again of abundance, continually multiplying as it progresses. But this is not the end of the rich supply just to bring men into the kingdom, but it's an environment of a so great salvation. This is where our souls can delight itself in fatness. It speaks of being able to feast in this environment, this place of abundance. So this plenteous supply, after bringing us into the kingdom of the Lord's dear son, it begins to nourish us. It strengthens us and gives us um, ability to make progress and be enlarged. So we see that it's building upon a foundation. In Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So it's in this environment of Christ Jesus, in this plenteous environment, that we are abounding because of the resources that are provided there for us. Now remember in the garden, there was a great abundance of trees and of plants life that actually produced fruit that were for mankind and of course the beasts to eat from. This was the abundant uh, provision. Adam and Eve could partake of a tree with much fruit. They could take all they wanted and when you looked at the tree, I am positive there would be an abundance left on that tree left to partake of. So when they gathered all there was, there was still much more to obtain. That's like the kingdom. This is like where we've been placed in the abundance of the Lord. When we gather all that we can hold, there is still a great amount left that the Lord is holding forth, wetting our appetite for more, bringing us closer, helping us to desire more. In 2 Corinthians 9, verse 12, the New American Standard reads this way. I like this um, version, for the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing. So we see here the great plenty, the great abundance. Now also remembering back to the garden, Adam and Eve were told to eat of every tree. And Brother Given brought this out in our Genesis study that I hadn't really seen as clearly as I do now. Every tree of the garden they were to eat from because every tree had something that they had need of. 
again, like the Lord's abundance, we partake of every aspect of his manifold abundance because there is something necessary in his long suffering, in his joy, in his mercy, in his all of these things, we partake of every aspect. Even suffering and consolation we partake of. But what is the strength for? We're placed in this environment, we're built up and strengthened, but strength is given in order to be used. Everything that the Lord gives is intended to be used for something, and the strength that we receive from Him has a purpose also. We're being employed in His work. We're laborers together with Him. 2 Corinthians 15.58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. If for so much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So when you think of such a large kingdom that we've been placed of, one that we can't even see the bounds or the limits to, and the work that the Lord is doing in this place, his eternal purpose being worked out, you would have to be reminded that there are many, many areas that we will be able to put our hand to the work. Many different avenues that we can be used by him to profit the kingdom or to profit the servants of the kingdom. Um, Areas in which we can be spent for him. We use our strength for furthering his kingdom. Also in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 and verse 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward ye, toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. These are the works that he's before ordained that we walk in, and he's given us an abundance so that we can fulfill those things. Amen. But another way that our strength is used is bearing much fruit and glorifying our Father in heaven. Of the things that accompany salvation, it is said, if these things be in you and abound, they make you neither barren nor unfruitful. So these are reasons the Lord has given us abundance. Now some may think that this is the end of the purpose for which the Lord has provided this abundance, just to do good in the earth and to show good unto all men. But we know that this is not, this is just the beginning of the reason the Lord's given us these abundance, uh, abundant provisions. All of these labors are preparing us for an even greater abundance, one in which on earth we cannot even fancy the half, like the songwriters penned, this side of the golden shore. There is an abundant end to all of these things that the Lord is working presently. With his abundance, he's preparing us to show forth the fullness of him that filleth all in all. You're fulfilling a measure, and I'm fulfilling a measure, and when we are brought together, we're going to show the fullness. Think of the abundance of this glory for the Lord in that day. This is the end to which we're working and receiving this abundance from the Lord. Now, I was speaking with Brother David after our lunch today, and we were both saying that we really ate more than our vessels were supposed to hold this afternoon. I know that we've all felt that way in the flesh, but brethren, think of this. Whenever we have passed over to the other side of the Golden Shore, we're going to have a new vessel that is meant to contain the fullness of God. This abundance that he has to give, our vessels are going to be able to receive it all. We are not going to say, Lord, I can't handle any more. We're going to say, continue, Lord, to fill us. This is a good thought. But tonight, I wanted to remind us that tonight is one aspect of the abundance of the Lord. He's given us this provision. He's prepared for us an abundance of truth through those that will speak to us this evening. And so I wanted to uh, encourage us all to be filled to the brim tonight. Amen. We'll open with.